Sports. Mark Gubiza joins us. So, Mark, just take us through your experiences. I'm sure you went through a shortened season at some point and only gave 80 innings, and then the next year they were like, hey, you're our workhorse. Go 200. What should the plan be? Well, you know, I a couple times I had some injuries. That I, that's why I limited the amount of innings. But I think, what it, you know, I always was a pitcher that – I really didn't really get it going until the month of June. So April and May was a battle. Uh, got those innings, and I got better and stronger the more I threw. So that's the thing I look forward and kind of worry about a little bit about all these pitchers from last year. It was an incredibly difficult season on so many different levels. So you go from throwing 80-plus innings to now all of a sudden you're expected maybe to get up to close to 200 innings. Uh, you know, I think your regimen continues the same as possible during the offseason. You maybe throw a little bit more to be able to build some arm strength, but – most pitchers will always tell you you don't get strong until you throw enough innings to continue to throw. So that's something everyone's going to have to look forward to as far as the pitching coach, the manager, organizations, general managers, even, you know, the athletic trainers of every single staff. So that's going to be something they're going to keep an eye on going forward. So let's bring it inside the room, and then we'll go back to Mark. Team perspective here, Joel. What do you take from Alex Anthopoulos' comments that they, they might be a little more case-by-case case, where some other teams might have more of a set plan? Like, hey, nobody's going on over number X, you know, 150. I generally agree with Alex Anthopoulos, which is we've come up with all of the Jabba rules for 30 teams, right? And that hasn't really slowed pitching injuries all that much. I think we have ways now of measuring strength if guys are falling out of their normal deliveries and we can, the teams can say, well, this is a guy who now needs a back off. And I think we can learn from that. Having said that, we are in a wilderness which we've never been in before. And I do think more than ever, teams have to think of who are the 10 to 12 guys who can start games for me? Who are the 25-ish guys who can throw innings for me? Because if we are able to play 162 games in 1,450 innings, I think the puzzle has never been more difficult. Mm -hmm. I think it's hard when you're trying to have that maximum exertion when you haven't built up to it. Like, think about last year. That stat's got like 84 innings. That's crazy. Like Shane Bieber, I think of as a workhorse, 77 innings. So I understand how management and teams are saying, listen, let's be careful. You might want to denigrate them and saying, oh, you're babying these teams. But I understand they're saying, listen, this is a very important investment. Nate Pierce from the Blue Jays, this guy throws 100. We want him to be an ace for the next 10 years. We cannot afford him to have him throw 200 innings just because we think we're in the playoff fund. So I understand Alex's point. Don't put a firm figure. But what happens is this. Even in the back of your head, you say, you know what? I don't really want to go over 140 innings. We're not going to publicly say that, but 140-ish. And all of a sudden, we're in the playoff race. Oh, my God, it looks so great. Let's just keep going. All of a sudden, before you know, like, it's a 220 innings. It's very tricky. I think even with Alex saying he doesn't have a firm number, I think everyone is still saying, hey, I know there's no firm number, but he goes over 150. Our jobs are, are over. Like, let's not do this. Mark, do you think that's what's going to happen? Do you think, well, you cover the Angels on a daily basis. They say to everyone, hey, no matter what, 150, 150 is the number, okay? We're not going <laughs> to tell, tell him that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, guys, you know how uh, starting pitchers, we want to go. I mean, we always were measured on going at 200-plus innings. Well, we don't see that that much anyhow. What I heard Joe Madden say the other day, when the Angels have done it the last couple of years, six-man rotations, does every club do that right now to limit starters as far as getting pushed to that 150 to 175 inning plateau. There's always going to be guys like Trevor Bauer. So you know what? I want to throw 200 innings. They're going to be Garrett Coles of the, of the world want to do the same. So you're still going to have to put them in position to pitchers where your workout routine during the offseason is going to have to be really, really important. Get that thrown in, you know, your long tossing use those weighted baseballs, the bands, all those things going in this spring training, whenever that even starts. And then you go and determine which guys do we feel we could push a little bit more than others. And I think that's the big thing. You're going to have to be honest and ask questions of pitchers, even though most times you're never honest. Every time you say, hey, I feel great. I can keep going. But you're going to have to really be honest and sit everyone down. The communication is going to be even more important than ever as far as how strong you are. And then pitchers and pitching coaches and managers are really going to have to have a good feel, not just go worry about the third time through the lineup, fourth time through. Look and determine – when this guy seems to be getting a little more fatigued, and if that's the case, you push it back a couple days as far as in between starts. Mark, Joel Sherman here. Thanks for joining us. I hope, uh, hey, I hope you and I are down the right field line at Diablo talking about pitching like we usually do during spring training at some point. But we'll have to, this will have to suffice for now. I want to take you beyond the major leagues, which obviously you were an excellent major league pitcher. 
I'm wondering about how we have depth this year when there was no minor league season last year, and we're not sure about the minor league season moving forward. And I wonder if I could put your pitching brain to how to prepare depth in an organization when I didn't have a minor league season last year. Maybe some guys are pitching winter ball now, and I might not have a standard spring training minor league season next year. What do I do to get my double-A AA and triple-A guys ready for up and down when I need depth during the season? Yeah, Joel, that's that's a great, great question. And by the way, I'm looking forward to our conversations down there in Tempe, Tempe Diablo, I hope at some point in spring training. But I know there's a number of guys trying to play, whether it's in winter ball, even over at Australia. I know some people that I know are going over there to try to play. It's it's a situation where I know all pitching coaches and managers are having Zoom calls with all their players in the major league level. But I think it's going to be more important or every bit as important to talk to those players in the minor leagues to make sure they're just not casually going through the all season. You got to ramp up your throwing program as much as possible. And you hope that minor league baseball is played. I, I really had a tough time. I felt so sorry for all those players that missing maybe potentially ever getting the opportunity to make it to the major league level. So again, I go back to, you have to talk to these young players and make sure they just don't casually go about their business during the off season. Make sure their, their mindset is whenever that call is to be in spring training, whether minor league camp or major league camp, you better be ready to throw the batters in batting practice and gradually work yourself into lives hitting situations. Mark, thank you so much for the insight. We appreciate it. Unprecedented season here coming up. It's going to be crazy, but you know what? I think uh, I'm, I'm excited about it already. It's all I do is keep tweeting about baseball and baseball, and baseball. So <laughs> I can't wait for it to start. Whenever it's going to be, it's going to be a fantastic season, I think, coming through in 2021. I'm with you. Thank you, Mark.